despair and misunderstanding often lead to prejudice against people with mental illness. This stigma can lead to feelings of hopelessness, in some instances, shame, and those struggling to cope with their situation, creating a serious barrier to diagnosis and treatment. So joining us now to discuss this is author of Hard Gal for Dead and Director of Communications at the Jamaica Mental Health Advocacy Network, Tamika Tammy Sansai Coley. Morning, Tammy. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. How are you doing? Morning, Dahlia. I'm really good. How are you? I am good. Thank you for asking. It's a tough one, Tammy, because, uh, you know, I think we're making headway, but I, I still think we have far to go. Um, what do you, or what, in, from your experience, what drives the stigma in Jamaica? What are the cultural and social things that, that make us so afraid? Because I think that's what it is, an ignorant of, of mental wellness. That is absolutely what it is. I would say that definitely fear and ignorance are what drive the stigma. Mm -hmm. And there's also a lot of misinformation. So because people don't understand that there's a difference between mental health and mental illness, anything that has mental in it, people shy away from. They're afraid to speak up about it because they don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to be shut out. They don't want to be looked down on. And mm -hmm. the reason for that is because people don't understand that it's a spectrum. Mm -hmm. In the same way that physical health is a spectrum, mental wellness is also a spectrum. So you can be here where you're good and you can be over here where you're in very poor health. And when you're in very poor health, that is what mental illness is. Mm -hmm. But people associate that with an image of mad people on the road eating out a pan right so they're afraid to say that they're struggling because they don't want to be seen that way and because of the stigma it affects everything so it affects your self-image it affects the relationships you have with people if everyone is going to treat you like you're incompetent or you don't have any sense um there have been cases where companies that don't understand have fired people mm -hmm. for these for, for knowing that you know they have mental health challenges or because they don't want to put them on the health insurance because the medication is expensive. So the stigma is really driven by that. And there is also a lot of misinformation about the fact that there is not much access to mental health services or if there is access that it's very expensive, mm -hmm. which can happen but it's not always the case because there are a lot of free services people can take advantage of yeah it, it's come a long way because you're you're right i feel like uh, a lot of these services in times gone by would have been the extremity like yes. you know people say okay and we like to toss the word madarone in jamaica and mm -hmm. so it's it's when it's the extremity of okay you're gonna be naked and walking on the streets and that so so people don't want to be associated with that but you raise something critical and it's the idea that people with, with, with mental health issues deserve to lead a normal life. Yes. Um, and Absolutely. that's also a fear. If I say I have an issue, um, I might lose my job. Um, I'm going to be ridiculed in class. My family is going to alienate me. Um, are those still real issues in Jamaica, Tammy? Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. I am really sad to say yes. But we, we need a top-down approach if we're going to tackle the cultural and social um, issues that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is that the general populace just does not know, doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. And if we, we have um, people at the top who also don't understand, there is no way that the change is going to happen. There needs to be public awareness campaigns. There needs to be actually the same kind of approach that we're doing with vaccination would be excellent for mental health as well. Because yeah. in my view, mental health is an underlying global pandemic with COVID-19 right now. Because yes. one of the main things that has happened is that people's outlets have been stripped away from them. Yes. And yes. the stresses have multiplied by 10 sometimes more than 10 since COVID has come in. So we're now being forced to pay even more attention to it. And then, of course, you know, you're not going into work anymore. You're not going to school anymore. So your social interactions have been pulled back. You know, you can't go to the gym as much. You can't go to the park or the beach. So the outlets that you would have to manage your stress, the things that would make life more bearable for you, you don't have them anymore. 
And the thing about it is that when you're dealing with mental wellness and um as i mentioned being on the spectrum same way physical health you know you can be either diseased or in perfect health but most of us live somewhere in the middle and that is the same case with mental health so you can be fine but then covid hits and you lose your job or your husband dies from covid and the next thing you know your mental health is challenged and you need additional support that you didn't expect that you would have to deal with so it's really for us to understand that this is a challenge that anyone can face at any time based on just regular life changes Tammy, so we need people to to teach people that that's the key you know? what you just said is the key it's a spectrum we have no idea when our mental health will shift along that spectrum. And so the only thing right now is knowledge has to replace judgment. Exactly. Because you don't know if it's going to be you, your child, your coworker, and you just have to be able to respond to it. Um, I, 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 I find that you know, in, in other countries, mental, we speak, they speak more about mental health. Um, yeah. I have friends who say, oh, oh no, I call my therapist. Um, I think Tiffany Haddish says she has seven. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> oh, it's a wow. thing. Oh, oh no, I call my therapist and it's okay. Um, we don't want to say we, we, we're not going to the therapist in <laughs> Jamaica. And, 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 that, and that affects just, I think, how our, our mental health is as a society. Um, Agri Irons, bless his soul, mentioned something years ago and people cuss him, but he nailed it. Um, for your own, from your own experience, how do you, if you have faced it, how do you handle stigma? That is a very big challenge. Up to now, I still face stigma. Um, wow. I started doing this advocacy work a decade ago in 2011 and I knew when I was taking it on, I knew the associated risks that would come with it because we are much further along now when it comes to having mental health conversations. But when I started, nobody was talking about it. And that is what I recognized was missing. I realized that the conversation was only about madness and not so much about having an issue that needs support to be handled. Right. So I was like, nobody knows someone who deals with this on a daily basis. Nobody knows someone that they can point out and say, this is someone who has experienced a mental health challenge. Maybe I should document my experience and share it with people mm -hmm. and see if I can help to make a small difference. Right. And it has taken this much time for it to start working. But initially when I started, there was a lot of backlash. I used to get um, hate messages. I don't know who the person was, but there was one person who used to send me consistent hate messages. Um, and that person used to always comment on all my posts and tell me that I'm looking for attention mm -hmm. and that I'm lying about my experience. So there are people who, people who face that when they speak up. Mm -hmm. And I really just want to share that based on how heavy stigma is, if you think about it, it is really not smart <laughs> to think that someone is doing that for attention because it is a taboo topic and it automatically puts you in a category that makes people want to dismiss you and feel like you're less than mm -hmm. so why would somebody willingly come to you and say that mm -hmm. if they're really not experiencing that it is very unlikely so yeah. even if you doubt that the person is going through it when they share something with you, listen to them, ask them what they need, that kind of thing. So for me, I have learned over the years to cultivate a community that is supportive and understanding, and that is very helpful. Um, but I have faced stigma in organizations that I have worked in sometimes, in my friendships, in my relationships, um, just online as well. Mm -hmm. And that is not something that ever stops. It is reduced a lot no, because as I said, we're having more conversations. Yeah. But what I really do is just remind myself of the fact that for some reason, God gave me this as my life purpose. It is my duty to come here and educate people about mental health, mm -hmm. mental illness, the stigma, and just try to get some understanding. It is a very difficult task. It's exhausting. Mm -hmm. It is discouraging sometimes. But 
no matter how I try to run from it, it always finds me back. So yeah. I just understand that. that this is my work and that helps me to stay focused on doing the work. Wow. But I really urge people to just be more open mm -hmm. and be kind. Mm -hmm. It Tommy, really helps. Thank you so much. You do so much. And I want to thank and I want to encourage everyone that the Jamaica Mental Health Advocacy Network is available to you on Instagram. You can email them, jamhan2012 at gmail.com or jamhancoms at gmail.com. I'm going to give you the telephone numbers as well, 876-898-2338, because sometimes we find it difficult to reach out to the persons that are closest to us. Um, and here are people, they're objective, and they will, they will guide you to where you need to go. And it's important if you feel you need to go there, go there. I, I, I know we're out, but Sajikor got to big them up. I went to a mental health fair that they had for their staff. It was amazing. So big up. Tammy, always awesome talking to you, girl. Thank you so much, Delia. Lovely talking to you as well. Author of Hard Gal for Dead and Director of Communications, Jamaica Mental Health Advocacy Network, Tamika Tammy Sansai. Up next, reggae soulman Ginger joins us to share his views on social responsibility in the music industry. Please stay with us.